Hi there, Andrew here. We're putting feelers out for the idea of sponsors for the show. We have grown to a sizable audience of legal professionals, and we'd love to find a way to get the resources to continue to grow the show and spend more time on it. This might take the form of more longer form, maximum minimum competence episodes, or longer daily episodes, or maybe short interviews. We've had a couple of inquiries regarding sponsorship, but want to get feedback from all of you, the listeners. If you have thoughts or have a sponsor in mind that you think would be a good fit, shoot me an email at andrew at leahy.org. We're still very much in the brainstorming stage, so all ideas are good ideas. So ends the housekeeping segment. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to the Minimum Competence episode for Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. I'm your host for today, Gina Leahy, a real estate and finance attorney from Philadelphia. In today's episode, we have Jack Daniels not wanting to be confused for bad spaniels, FTC arguing for click to cancel, Amazon labor misdeeds, and a case involving the 1983 Beirut bombing. Let's boogie oogie oogie over to today's legal news. The U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments this week in a case involving a parody dog toy named Bad Spaniels, which resembles a Jack Daniels whiskey bottle. Jack Daniels is appealing a lower court's ruling that the toy is protected by the First Amendment as expressive work, while also raising trademark infringement concerns. The justices were cautious about scraping the Rogers test, which allows artists to lawfully use another's trademark when it has artistic relevance to their work and would not mislead consumers about its source. Some justices, however, questioned whether the Rogers test struck the right balance between a company's interest in protecting its corporate image against free speech protections. The Biden administration's lawyer urged the justices to instead adopt a likelihood of confusion test, which considers whether the acts would likely cause marketplace confusion. The decision is expected to be made by the end of June. By way of very brief background on the Rogers test, the Rogers test is a legal test used in trademark law to determine whether the use of a trademark in a creative work, such as a book, or movie, or dog toy, is protected by the First Amendment's guarantee of free speech. The test was established by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in Rogers v. Grimaldi in 1989 and has since been adopted by other courts. The case centered on a movie, Ginger and Fred, that saw two characters emulating the dancing style of Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. Ginger Rogers took umbrage with, among other things, her name being used in the title. Under the Rogers test, a trademark use in a creative work is protected by the First Amendment if it has some artistic relevance to the work and does not explicitly mislead consumers as to the source of the work. This means that if a trademark is used in a creative work in a way that is relevant to the work and not likely to confuse consumers as to its source, the use is protected by the First Amendment. The Rogers test strikes a balance between the interests of trademark owners in protecting their marks and the interests of creators in expressing themselves through their works. It recognizes that the use of trademarks in creative works can be a legitimate form of artistic expression, and that trademark law should not be used to restrict such expression unless it would cause consumer confusion or other harm to the trademark owner. The Federal Trade Commission has proposed a new rule, known as the Click to Cancel Rule, which would require companies to offer online cancellation options that are as easy as the online sign-up process for subscriptions. This proposal would affect various companies, including fitness and media companies, and would also require companies to send reminders before automatic renewals are billed. The FTC's chair, Linda Kahn, stated that companies should not be able to manipulate consumers into paying for subscriptions they don't want. The proposal comes as more companies have shifted to a subscription-based business model, creating greater opportunities for mischief. While some companies such as Netflix, Peloton, and Spotify already offer easy cancellation options, others such as cable television companies and Adobe make it harder. The subscription market is expected to expand into a $1.5 trillion market by 2025, up from $650 billion in 2020 and the average American spent $273 a month on subscription services in 2021, according to a consulting firm. The proposed rule is the latest from the FTC, which has taken a more aggressive approach under con, proposing rules to curb online data collection and ban nationwide non-compete clauses. 
A U.S. district judge in New York has ordered Iran's central bank and a European intermediary, Clearstream Banking S.A., to pay $1.68 billion to the families of troops killed in the 1983 bombing of the U.S. Marine Corps barracks in Lebanon. The lawsuit, which was filed by the victims and their families, sought to enforce a judgment against Iran for providing material support to the attackers. Bank Markazi, the Iranian central bank, and Clearstream were named in the lawsuit. Clearstream, which is holding the $1.68 billion in a client account, said that it is considering appealing the decision. Deutsche Bersa AG, Clearstream's parent company, said that it does not view the ruling as increasing the risk from a lawsuit in a way that would require the companies to make financial provisions. The October 23, 1983 bombing at the Marine Corps barracks killed 241 U.S. service members. In 2007, the victims and their families won a $2.65 billion judgment against Iran in federal court over the attack. They sought to seize bond proceeds allegedly owned by Bank Markazi and processed by Clearstream to partially satisfy the court judgment. In January 2020, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned a lower court ruling in the family's favor and ordered the case to be reconsidered in light of a new law adopted a month earlier as part of the National Defense Authorization Act. Thanks so much for listening to Minimum Competence, your daily news podcast for lawyers. If you're looking for more than Minimum Competence, links to further reading on all of the topics touched on today are in our show notes. If you have any questions or story suggestions, find us on Mastodon on the esq.social instance. I'm at Gina and my co-host Andrew is at Andrew. That's me! Reviews go a long way towards helping new listeners to find our show. If you have a moment and can leave a rating or review on your podcast player, we'd appreciate it. And if you know someone that might be interested in a story we cover, please send them our episode. Minimum Competence is part of the Esquire Cast network of podcasts and is available at minimumcomp.com. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And until then, stay funky, friends, with your minimum competence. <laughs>